What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. The Red Hot Chili Peppers, my favorite band, a uh, band that I pretty much grew up with. Uh, my mom purchased the CD Blood Sugar Sex Magic for herself. What this was like mid 90s that came out. Uh, I was like preteen, teenage. I was a teenager, early, te- like 13, 14, maybe somewhere in there. Uh, it wasn't, she didn't end up liking it. You know, it was the trendy thing. It was under the bridge and give it away were the, 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 you know, major song. I mean, there was, it's a great album top to bottom. One of the best albums ever made in my opinion. Um, she didn't like it. She gave it to me. I of course listened to it all of the time. It was one of like three CDs I had and I would go, the only CD player I had at the time was in my mom's forerunner so i would go into her truck and just listen to the the cd (laughs) because there's no we didn't have our stereo at home like it was old school had like a tape deck and a radio and like a record player um so eventually i got myself a disc man but in the meantime i was listening to it in my mom's car and uh eventually got their earlier albums like mother's milk uh uplift mofo party plan uplift what was it called then there's their self-titled one um and then since then they've come out with i mean there's been ups and downs with the group uh john fashante one of i'm not the original members it started off with uh um hillel slovak and jack irons where hillel was the guitar player jack was the drummer uh Hillel died of an overdose and that's when they picked up John Fashante and Chad Smith uh Jack Irons left after I believe he left after the overdose um and this was like early I think they started in 1980 and they were like early trying to mix funk with like punk um and Flea had come from kind of a punk background so he had his own kind of style of how he played bass Anthony Kiedis wasn't even like He was kind of into hip hop also, not a singer at all, but that was kind of an influence with he when he started and he was like just added in like last minute. Um, Came out with a book, Scar Tissue, which is amazing, kind of chronicles the history of the band itself, uh, but primarily Anthony Kiedis and his struggles with addiction. Um, And those addictions have kind of explode, you know, kind of. uh, affected the trajectory of the band in a lot of way not the trajectory but it definitely you could see the effects of it with the work that they put out um especially when like john fashante is left um and come back so anyway the whole reason i'm doing this episode is because on my birthday december 15th the chili peppers put out a, a press release or an, an announcement that they were parting ways with their current guitarist josh uh klinghoffer who's been with them for their past two albums, I think he was like a backup guitarist uh, from before when John Fashante was there. But John's come and gone. He like, yeah, I mean, he has his own addiction problems, but he also struggles with, I think, the fame of the band. And he he's done his own side projects, but he's left and he's come back multiple times. Dave Navarro was uh, in the band for a bit um, for one album, which I don't mind that album. The the uh, one hot minute album uh anthony was very high was having a a huge relapse at the time uh of the album so it's it's kind of uh you know not the strongest from his at least from his point of view you get to see flea have a track on the song like it's it's a very different album because you know fashante wasn't there who was a big part of their sound and you know kind of the my what i love about like john fashante is an artist like he is like chad smith their drummer is a badass he's fucking beats the fuck out of the drums he's an amazing drummer flea has his own kind of funky fuck slap super you know like he can he, i like i like how thick his his bass chords are and then john fashante is just like talks to aliens and then anthony kiedis has just grown over the years become a better singer um but his writing has always been you know very creative um so you know they've come and come and gone and on the birthday 
They announced that John Fashante is coming back to the band, which their newer album, I mean, they're okay. It was okay. They've had ups and downs, I'm telling you. But they've, like, it's crazy how they, you know, Blood Sugar Sex Magic was a huge hit. And then, what, like 10 years later, um, they came out with, uh, what was it, By the Way? What was that the album called? But It was the one with Scar Tissue and uh, Other Side. And it was just like, when their albums hit, their albums, they have like the majority of the tracks on the album become number one hits. That's like how, and then they'll like be dormant for a decade and then they'll come out with something else uh, like Stadium Arcadium, a double album. I love that album. Um, just like hu- just a huge amount of, of hits off of that, that those uh, albums. Um but yeah, so I'm super excited that John Fashante is coming back to the Chili Peppers. Uh, I'm really excited to see what they come up with. They've changed. They used to have Rick Rubin was like, they considered him the fifth member of the band for a long time. I think just maybe their last two albums, uh, but for sure the last one, they had a different producer. Uh, I think that was uh, some DJ... I'm blanking on the mighty DJ mouse, mousey mouse, mighty Mickey mouse. I forget something like that. Uh, totally blanking, but not as I, I, I would also love to hear the news that they're going back to Rick Rubin. Um, but maybe not. I don't really mind. I wouldn't mind seeing another producer, but I think with John Fashante back, because as good as Josh was, he, it really felt like he was just doing an impression of John Fashante. Um, And he's a lot younger too. Like all these guys are old and they've been doing it forever. And Josh was like in his, I want to say like in his twenties or early thirties, which has to be a mind fuck to be jumping into be the lead guitarist in one of the biggest bands in music history. Uh, But especially with how create, I mean, the 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 creativity that John is with his guitar playing is just something that you you really only get to see when you watch their live performances. Uh, my favorite one that I watch many many times is the literally the intro to the their live album Live at Slane Castle. Uh, the intro to that is part of the intro to this podcast. Um, and hopefully I don't get fl- like I'm waiting any day, like all of my episodes just disappearing because of uh, copyright. But it's just of Fushante playing the guitar before they come on stage, just kind of warming up, uh, not necessarily warming up, but it's the beginning of the uh, the live uh, special that they did, uh, which I love. I love it. I- I've seen them live not as many times as somebody who loves a band usually does. I've seen them maybe four or five times over the years. Uh, saw them at Coachella, uh, back in like 2002. Um, saw them a couple times in San Diego. Uh, I think maybe once in LA, I can't remember. Uh, but just, I, I love, I love them as a band. I love them. And they're also through pop culture because they're also actors, Flea is in a bunch of stuff. He's in the most recently Queen Slim and Queen, Queen and Slim, uh, which was an okay movie. He has a small part, good actor. Uh, but like Back to the Future, uh, Big Lebowski, Point Break, like so many movies growing up, these guys were also mostly Flea, but Anthony was in in Point Break. They were like, and then uh, Chad Smith being the doppelganger of Will Ferrell. Like, there's so much of this band like just fused into pop culture the ufc the anthony kiedis is a huge fan of the ufc so he's always there and i was like oh it's like you know like my favorite shit like they they really inspire my and influence my taste in art because they're very they're the the genres of music that they 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 melded together hip-hop punk funk um they've kind of created their own sound in a lot of ways which i really enjoy and i've enjoyed seeing them grow and evolve as artists i mean you listen to their early albums it's vastly different than their current stuff which is vastly different from the you know what they were putting out you know the 299 2000 whenever 
Scar Tissue came out. I'm not sure if that's the name of the album. I can't believe I'm blanking on the album. Um, but yeah, I'm just a huge fan of the band. Happy to see John Frusciante back. I can't wait to see what they come up with next. I'm glad they haven't died. Like of all the musicians and artists that uh, are dying, like the the only one really that would destroy me is if like Anthony Kiedis or Flea or like any, if like the band broke up, like it's amazing that they're still together and I still enjoy the music that they make and really looking forward to the next one. Uh, yeah, just, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Uh, so go check them out <laughs> if you're not familiar with the Chili Peppers. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Super. It was an amazing birthday present to see that news. Uh, just, it was, uh, it was amazing. Uh, but that's it. New episodes of the Ray Taylor show come out every single day. Subscribe on IGTV, YouTube, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Go buy my artwork over at inspireddisorder.com and save 25% when you use coupon code R T. S. Follow me on social media at Ray Taylor. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace out.